In part A of this problem, we're looking for the Bode magnitude and phase plots. These are supposed to be constructed by hand. In part B, we're trying to find computer-generated versions of magnitude and phase plots for comparison. So when you're confronted with the uh, H of S, especially in this form, what you need to do is factor that so you can identify the individual zeros in the poles and any possible constant offset there might be. That is a constant gain factor. So let's bring this into Maple. Eventually I'll be doing plotting um, using a semi-log plot, so we need to do the width plots. Uh, let's see. So let me go ahead and enter in my numerator polynomial and my denominator polynomial. And then I will factor the numerator and the denominator. So there's the initial results that we need. Next, we need to write our transfer function in a standard form for Bode plotting. Work on the numerator first. So I bring out the term 200, leaving me with 1 plus s over 200. Again, you can confirm that if you took the 200 and multiplied it by 1, you get 200. If you multiply it by s over 200, of course, you just get the s. So that looks good. And we have another term two thousand, leaving us with one plus s over two thousand. Do the same thing underneath. Okay, need to identify our constant that sits out front. So I note that we've got one or cancellation of one, two, three, four, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Twos all drop out, leaving us with 50. So we have two zeros to plot, two poles, and then we need to convert our constant into db form. So let's do 20 log 10 of 50, and that gives us plus 34 db. So this is our constant offset. Now this particular transfer function has all of its breakpoints at multiples of 2, uh, like 20, 200, 2,000, and so on. So I'm going to construct my graph based on uh, decades oriented at 2. So here's my plot with properly labeled axes, units, it's also a log scale in frequency. So let's look back at our two zero locations. The first zero is at 200 radians per second. So that means we have a break right at 200. Then we rise at 20 dp per decade. And it, I'm actually using a straight edge as I'm doing this. So straight edges probably work the best in a piece of graph paper. So that gives us the response for the first zero. The second zero has its break at 2,000 radians per second. So we increase 20 dB per decade. And we end up with those two traces for our zeros. Poles start at 0 dB and go down. So we've got a pole with a break at 20 radians per second. 
so it's right here then we go down 20 DB per decade from there then we have one more pole with a break at 20 kilohertz I'm sorry 20 kilo radians per second right there and there's our decade drop now the reason that I've extended my graph another decade beyond the highest pole is to make it easier to draw that point right there the constant offset at 34 would be just about here so let me add that as our last trace so we've got a constant 34 DB straight edge slip didn't really mean to draw an offset there so now we uh, add all of these curves together so in the range 2 to 20 radians per second our first decade um, everything is zero except for the constant so we start at 34 so I'm going to draw this in red over the next decade everything remains the same except this pole kicks in so we should drop total of 20 dB that would be right there in one decade during the next decade everything remains the same except now we add a total rise of 20 dB per decade so that means the two active ones cancel each other and we're left with the constant offset during the next decade this one kicks in giving us 20 dB per decade rise again I'm sorry but I have to backtrack here it's too hard to try to update the video later on so I'm just going to backtrack um, the part that I missed is when we take a 20 dB drop over one decade starting at 34 we're supposed to end up at 14 so during that first decade we go like that during the next decade again we leave our constant then we add 20 dB over the next decade again so that brings us up to where we started at 34 dB So after that, this term and this term continue in opposite directions, effectively canceling each other. And so we end up at 34 dB. So again, the red trace is the final result, at least for the Bode magnitude plot. Let's go ahead and compare that to the con computer generated solution using Maple. So continuing in my worksheet I take my numerator divide it by the denominator to get my transfer function h of s here I'm saying let's let h of j omega be h of s evaluated at s equals j omega so we use substitution command for that um, take a look at this stuff in the semi log plot area here uh, some of these things are gear to making the plot work out a little bit nicer so you might want to use this in your own work but essentially I've just set it up so I'm doing semi log plot uh, here I'm converting to DB here I'm doing the magnitude response and sure enough let me get the scale in there a little bit better Got nice agreement there. We've got 34 dB at the DC point. Drops down, comes back up, so it looks like our Bode plot. So again, this is our straight line approximation. If we actually wanted to do a little bit better job with our hand sketch, uh, simply 
indicate your 3 dB corrections there. 3 dB would be about like that. Um, a little shy there. Something like that. So if I did kind of a smooth hand sketch here, comes down, comes back up. Then we get more of the curve like we saw in Maple.